Hi everyone! I wanted to do a quick tutorial for this sweet little roses and bumblebee in the garden watercolor. Um, super quick and, and really fun to do, so I hope you enjoy it. I wanted to show you kind of my layout right here. I have my water, obviously my paints. I keep another jar of water off screen. I have my intuition rounds in a size 10 and a size 8. I'll be using those and my sonnet and semi art watercolors and uh, my pre cut three by five card. I just cut it from my regular watercolor paper. So whatever you have on hand is fine. This is B Paper Company. Hopefully I'll remember to put everything down below. So let's get started. First, I wanna start with my water and just brush in in this little garden area. Just wanna brush some water. I wanna keep it very loose and just kind of have that rounded triangular shape, but uh, leaving a little white space here and there. And then I wanna go directly into that with my Matter Lake Red and just drop some pigment in there. Now, sometimes if you add red and your, or your pinks and your greens together, you'll get kind of a muddy look. I actually don't mind that on this. I'm just going to kind of start some greens in this. I like to kind of just hint at leaves and hint at petals. I'm not um, super concerned with making things look entirely botanically correct. I like the idea of a leaf, the idea of a flower. so. So that's what I'm going from. So I really, I like that so far. I feel like that's a good start. And now I'm going to rinse my brush. I keep that extra jar so that I can rinse the um, pigment off my brush, but then I use the clean jar to brush in when I'm just brushing water onto my paper or when I'm also brushing pigment. But that other jar helps me to be able to clean that off and I really like that. So here I just added water in the rough shape of a bumblebee and I'm just putting in two little yellow stripes in there. Then I'll come back when this is dried just a little and I'll try to get a black my black in the center and the head and then the the tail end and the little um, I'm not sure if it's a stinger actually but <laughs> but whatever it is I'll get that in there and the little legs and the and the wings and whatnot so I want to go back and work on these roses and I still have a bit of moisture but mostly it's up here and uh, and so I think I'll start with this and I just kind of look for if I can see something that looks like it would make a good shape for a rose and and to kind of look at what direction I think it would go. Um, here I, I probably want to aim this kind of downward and these two kind of outward. So, so that's all I do. And then to start I just kind of lift and and dot and squiggle my way around a center. I try not to uh, use too many joined curves or crescents or, or whatnot. I try to pick up my brush quite a bit, but um, I can get kind of, uh, it, just where I'm not thinking about it enough and kind of mess that up. And then I, 
would like to go back and just soften these up because I'd like for them to flow a little more. And that was really a lot of water on this big brush, which I knew could happen, but we're just gonna go with the flow. Because I do want them nice and soft. So I sped this up right here, but I basically just kept doing the same thing I did in the previous rows. I just used alternating crescents, light and heavier pressure, and then I came back in with some water and just brushed into those uh, petals that I had made just to soften them a bit. My goal is that all the roses end up looking cohesive and go together. And you know, you really can use whatever brush you like. I like to just have some uneven pressure. I like to lift and lower my, lift and lower, and you know, pick my brush up. I like to have some little thin squiggles and, and even dots like you see there. And because these are kind of joining here, I like the idea of some darkness there. So I like that it gets deeper. And then I'm just taking in more water, softening this up. One of the things I like about adding water is how random it is and you kind of don't know what you're going to get. And I. I sometimes I equally like that and dislike it, but in general, I really do like it. I think it's a fun aspect of watercolor when you're when you're painting loosely and and then you know just adding water randomly to see what happens. It's really fun. So I want to make these little buds, and I do not really care how accurate they look. I think honestly, for for people who have felt that art was inaccessible for whatever reason, not trying to get something completely perfect is one of the ways that I think it it becomes freer to us and it becomes more open and available and not to get preachy or anything like that, but but I think that's one of the things that helped me was just realizing that I don't have to paint something that can go in an in a um, science book that shows here's what a rose looks like. We, everyone knows what a rose looks like. And so how about my interpretation of what a rose looks like or or how I can communicate that? And I just love that idea. For me, that is that is something that you know gives me a bit more confidence I think in my just in my own art and now I'm just going back with a little bit of this pigment and I love that it's just kind of flowing and spreading in that in the water I'm actually really fairly happy with what all is going on here. I just have a few more minutes. I see my bee has gotten really dry and I'm not sure why he's so misshapen. <laughs> We're going to... <laughs> I must have gotten a little more water on there that I was just not aware of. So... Now the great thing about these little bumblebees is they're just forgiving. They could be really, you know, just any kind of angle or whatever and so they don't have to be perfect none of it has to be perfect okay now I am going to let that dry a little more after I add this portion of pigment and that's because obviously I had to kind of adjust him and so we'll let that dry and then I'll come back and give him just a, those stripes and whatnot. So right now, 
I'm going to switch my brush to this number eight round. And I want to add in a little water here. And the great thing about just adding that water is you're kind of picking up some pigment too. And, and so you can brush that in a place where you want a little bit of, okay. And now I wanna work on these leaves. This is my olive green. It is, uh, I think it's Simi Art. And it just tends to be my favorite olive. And again, remember how I'm not worried about anything being botanically correct. It's very freeing. I like some overlap. I feel like uh, that adds to some depth there and it's just so easy to do. But I am kind of, I'm a little um, confined because I do have still some some wetness. Now you can use if you have a hair dryer or a heat gun, and I do keep a heat gun right here at my work area, but I just kind of want to work where where I'm able to work first. And then if I need to take the heat gun to it, I will. But I have some dry areas that I can work at. So I sped this up again because it's just placing leaves here and there. But one of the things that I really like to do is overlap some leaves where I already have some background green. And then I like to add in just some random veins. I do not get too meticulous with this. Again, I'm not going for botanical accuracy. I just like something that kind of gives it character and depth. So I go in with those veins and I just try to keep a really loose hand and stay really relaxed and, and just kind of let those kind of migrate where they will. And then I added some little, just little tendrils or vines and uh, finished out those, those leaves with some veins as well. Leaf placement is always a challenge for me, so leave something in the comments if it's a challenge for you too. Also, that pun was completely unintentional. So now I just wanna go in and give my little bumblebee his black stripes. The center area will be where I pull his wings from. And, uh, and so I like for that, I like to do that part first because I like for it to get a little, a little drier and not be just so intensely wet because then that helps me get a nice wispy wing. And so to get these black stripes, what I did was I re-wet the areas on the bumblebee that I wanted to paint with the black because it had gotten so dry. And so I re-wet those three sections and then I dropped in this black pigment. And now I'm just trying to make sure to shape the head. It gets a little wider up at the top. Okay. I like to do their little legs. I want to be a little shorter on this, on the front leg, but the one that's closer to me, I make a little bit longer. I also go into the body there. And little antenna. And so I like to make the, the back side wing and see I'm just letting that black pigment bleed into that. 
Then I make this one and it's bigger. It's closer and it's bigger. And now I can take a bit of that out. I'm just rinsing my brush and then dabbing it to dry on my cloth back here and taking some of that pigment out. Because then I get this nice kind of sheer thing that I want. And then just kind of direct some of that pigment where you want it to go. And it looks really veiny, like, you know, like they're lacy, sheer wings tend to look. So I'm happy with that. And you could go in and, and define some lace in there if you'd like. I'm taking a little bit of water and brushing that little bit of water in to kind of separate some of this pigment out. But I'm really, really happy with that. I hope that you try this today. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them, any comments. Uh, be kind. I have no doubt you'll be kind. This is my first YouTube full-length tutorial. I was really excited to get to share it with you today, and, uh, and I hope you'll try it. Happy painting!